Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to do part B of the same problem we started on the previous video. And now you see that once we close the second switch, not only do we now have an additional branch, we have an additional voltage supply. And because of that, we now have three branches, two power supplies or voltage supplies, and now things become a little bit more complicated. But the general approach will still be the same. We first want to find the initial current. Of course, the initial current through the inductor will happen when the second switch closes, which is at four seconds. That will be the initial condition of the second part of the problem. So we can see that the current through the inductor will be exactly the same as before the switch closed. And then we come over here and we realize that the current through the inductor between zero and four seconds was defined by this equation. Since the time constant was small enough, we know that after four seconds we will have reached maximum current. This will go to zero when t becomes large enough, so the current through the inductor at time equals four seconds was four amps, and when we close the second switch at that very moment, the current will continue to be four amps because the inductor opposes a change in the current. So this will therefore be four amps, the final current from the previous part of the problem between zero and four seconds. Now we need to find the current at infinity. Now that's a little bit more difficult because we have two voltage sources. So we're going to get there in just a moment. I'll show you how to do that. In the meanwhile, let's find the Thevenin resistance and the new time constant with the second switch closed. So the Thevenin resistance, we short both of the voltage sources. So they're now shorted. The switches are all closed. When we go from one end of the inductor to the other end of the inductor, in one case, we have to go through this branch or we have to go through this branch, and then in both cases we have to go through the 6 ohm resistor. So that means that the, resist the resistance is going to be equal to 6 ohms based upon this resistance, plus, since this is a parallel branch, the 2 ohm and the 4 ohm, we take the product over the sum, so it would be 2 times 4 over 2 plus 4. So it would be 6 plus 8 over 6. Now let me write that here on the side, so we end up with R Thevenin, because I need a little bit more room, is going to be equal to 6 ohms plus the product 8 over 6. So 6 times 6 is 36 plus 8, that's 44 over 6. And 44 over 6, that would be equal to 22 over 3. So that would be, of course, in ohms. So that's the Thevenin resistance or the equivalent resistance for the inductor after the second switch closes. The time constant then is equal to the inductance, 5 divided by the new resistance, 22 over 3, which is going to be 15 over 22 seconds. It's kind of an odd number, but hey, good enough. So 3 times 5, 15 over 22 seconds. That's going to be the new time constant of this particular circuit after the second switch closes as well. So now we can continue until we figure out the current when a large time has passed, with other words, when the inductor no longer offers any resistance to the change in the current because the current is no longer changing, this will then be a short, and now we have to figure out what the current will be through this inductor. And the way to approach that is to say, well, let's call this current I1, go to this branch, let's call it I1, and let's call the current coming up this branch, let's call that I2, and then the current moving away from this joint right there, Let's call this current I3, which of course then will be the current through the inductor. And let's say that the voltage at that particular junction is going to be equals to V. Now we use Kirchhoff's current rule by saying that the sum of I1 plus I2 must equal I3. So we start, we say I1 plus I2, the two currents entering the, the junction will equal I3, which is the current leaving the junction. And the current I1 can be defined as the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor, which will be the, the difference between the 40 volt source and the voltage at the branch divided by the resistance. So I1 can be defined by 40 minus V divided by the resistance of 4 ohms. Plus, here we can see that the current I2 will be defined by the voltage supplied, 10 volts, minus the voltage of the branch divided by the resistance. So that would be 10 minus V divided by 2 ohms, and I3 can be found by saying it will be driven between the voltage difference between here and here, assuming that this here is at 0 volts, 
then we can say that the difference would be V minus zero divided by the resistance. Again, the inductor will not have a role, so it'll be V minus zero divided by six. Now we need to find V in order to find the current through the branch. So that means that to get rid of all the denominators, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by, let's see, the lowest common denominator would be 12. So 4, four goes into 12 three times, so that gives us 120 minus 3V, plus 2 goes into 12 six times, which is 60 minus 6V equals, and 6 goes into 12 twice, that would be 2V. Moving all the Vs to one side, that's 9 plus 2, that's 11, and that would be 180 equals 11V, or V equals 180 divided by 11. And of course, that would be volts. So that's the voltage at that branch point. All right, what we need to do now is find the current for times greater than four seconds. Now we have to be careful here because we have the switch closing at t equals zero and then the switch closing again at t equals four. So this here, this is the time elapsed since the second switch has closed. So when we plug in time greater than four seconds, we need to account for that in the time over here because that's what's going to affect the current after four seconds. So here we can say that the current I, when time is greater than four seconds, is equal to the current at infinity. Now the current at infinity, we, we determined that was going to be 2.727 amps, 2.727 amps, plus the current after four seconds, well, the current after four seconds, that's going to be four amps minus the current at infinity, which is 2.727 amps, multiply times e to the minus, now here we have to be careful, we have to go t minus four seconds divided by tau. Now, why did we do that? Because what's happening here, the exponential portion, is the change in the current through the inductor after the switch, the second switch closes at t equals four seconds. And that really starts relative to that time at t equals zero seconds when the second switch closes. So when t equals four, we get four minus four, which is zero. E to the zero is one. And so this subtract from four, point, from four amps, added to this will give us the initial four amps, which is the current that flows after four seconds. So we get the correct result that way. So now when we plug that, uh, when we continue this a little bit further, we have the current as time is greater than four seconds is equal to 2.727 amps plus the difference between these two, which is going to be 1.273 amps multiplied times e to the minus. And since tau in this case is going to be 15 over 22, 1 over tau will be 22 over 15, so minus 22 over 15 times t minus 4. So we do have to account for the fact that the second switch doesn't close until 4 seconds later, and so this essentially starts at 0 seconds when t is equal to 4 for the second switch. And that's how it's done.